So cycle one, um, and we're in chapter one, and we're going to go over the history of marine biology and the scientific method. Okay, so when people come into my class, um, they typically have some misconceptions about what marine biology actually is and what marine biologists do. Okay? And so some of those misconceptions are that they just study shark whales, dolphins, coral reefs, and they spend all their time on boats, and they're all fleece blonde hair, and they're all tan and fit, and um, they all just get to take these really fun biology classes. And that's what a marine biologist does. That's what people think when they come into my class. Um, so that's a little bit of a rosy picture, right? That's usually what you see like on TV, right? Where you watch, all, if you watch the Discovery Channel, maybe I'm just the only nerd in here. Um, but when you watch the Discovery Channel, that's typically what you see. People on boats, you know, and they're having a great time, okay? Eh, not quite a 100% accurate picture, okay? So here's a little bit more of the reality. So you do, if you're a certain kind of marine biologist, you may study sharks or whales or dolphins or coral reefs. However, um, there's a lot of other stuff that they study as well. You can study all of the animals that don't have backbones, so jellyfish, okay, octopus, sea anemones, crabs, okay, all sorts of different things you can study. Um, you can also study like bacteria, so little teeny tiny microscopic things in the ocean. You could study the plants in the ocean, the seaweed, the uh, seagrass, all the little microscopic phytoplankton. Um, you can look at the ha different habitats. You can look at animal interactions. There's just like endless things that you could study in the ocean. All right, so there's lots of different things that you can study. Um, and you do get to take really fun biology classes. But you also have to take other things like chemistry, okay, chemistry is super important. You'll probably take like a year of general chemistry, a year of organic chemistry, and probably biochemistry as well, all right? So a bunch of chemistry. Um, you will need to take physics and you will need to take calculus. In fact, you'll probably take a year of calculus-based physics. So then you get to take the fun classes too, but you got to have some background information as well. Um, and then, if you're lucky, you'll get to spend about 97% of your time on land in a lab or writing your paper, and about 3% of your time on the water. So, you don't get to spend as much time on the water as you would hope. Okay? I mean, certain types of um, marine biologists do spend more time on the water, but not all of them. So, here's just some pictures of different people who do different things. Um, so, Rich Lutz right here in the upper left-hand corner, um, he studies hydrothermal vents. Hydrothermal vents are areas on the sea floor where you have superheated water that comes out of the ocean's crust, um, like 400 degree water that comes out, and you have an entire ecosystem that lives around that little vent, and he studies that ecosystem. So that's what he's interested in. Um, Percy Washington there at the bottom right-hand corner, he's interested in fisheries. So he's looking at stuff like, um, how is the health of this fish stock? Are we taking too many out? Can we take more out? Like, what's going on? What's the age of the stock? That sort of thing. So he, that's what he looks at. Um, and then Mr. Kim right here is part of the Muscle Watch program. Um, how many of you knew that if um, you eat muscles from certain places at certain times of the year, you can die? Okay, you can actually die. And you can get paralytic or... Um, and uh, amnesic shellfish poisoning, um, and paralytic shellfish poisoning would kill you, right? So he's involved in like testing mussels and making sure that they're safe for you to eat. So that's good. So you can go to the restaurant and eat mussels and be just fine. Okay? Um, people also have questions about what the difference is between marine biology and oceanography. Um, and we'll do Mostly marine biology in this class, but you do need to do a little bit of oceanography just so you have background information and can understand the animals that live in the ocean much better. Um, but basically, marine biology is the study of the living things that live in the ocean and the interactions that they have with each other. Okay, so that's what they're interested in. So they're basically interested in biological questions but they're using the animals in the ocean to answer those questions. 
Oceanographers are much more interested in like the physical things of the ocean. So they're looking at things like waves and tides and currents. Okay, um, so much more of the physical aspects. Um, and that's the difference. Marine biology is like the living things. Oceanography is like the physical stuff. So we have to start out with a little bit of oceanography and talk about waves and tides and currents and stuff. Because then when we talk with the animals, it helps us to understand why they live where they live and what's going on. So we look at both a little bit. You do have a little bit of a gray area um, where it's like, is it marine biology? Is it oceanography? And the people who are called uh, biological oceanographers. So they're basically interested in ocean phenomena and how they impact living things. So, like, kind of a little bit of both. Right? Okay. So here's some reasons why we study marine biology. Basically, like 71% of the world is covered by the ocean. And we really don't know much about them or the things that live inside of them. And we literally know more about the surface of the moon than we know about the people. So there's a lot of stuff to be discovered. The cure for cancer could be in an animal in the ocean. We don't know. Why is it? We do not care? Or um, it's not that we don't care. It's that it's hard to study the ocean. Um, you know, it's easy to study land because we can breathe air and walk around. Like, the ocean is much harder. Um, and as you go down deeper in the water, it's more pressure, and so it's just hard to get down there. So that's why. Very curious things down there, but uh, it's just hard to get there. So the commercial value, we also get commercial value from uh, the ocean. There's a lot of jobs that come from the ocean, so fishermen make their living by using the resources of the ocean. Um, you can also, we also get food, generally, fish, shellfish like lobster, crab, and all of that stuff. Um, and then you also get all sorts of different sorts of raw materials, like you can drill for oil, um, you can find gold in the ocean, okay, so different kinds of things like that. Scientific value, uh, we learn a lot about things like animal behavior and genetics and ecology from studying things that live in the ocean. So there is a lot of scientific value there as well. Um, and you are alive and breathing right now because of the ocean. So there are billions and trillions of little teeny tiny microscopic things that live in the surface of the sea that are called phytoplankton that make about three quarters of our atmospheric oxygen. So you are breathing oxygen right now because of the ocean. Um, and so, you know, you hear like, save the rainforest, don't cut down the rainforest because you'll lose all the oxygen. Uh, that's true, we shouldn't cut down the rainforest, but uh, most of it comes from the sea. So, about three quarters. Um, human impacts, we actually see human impacts and ecological things uh, in the oceans first, so we can try and, and uh, figure out what's going on there and kind of prevent it from happening on land. Okay, so let's look at how we got to where we are today with marine biology. Uh, so, back in the day, the earliest people that were studying the subject of marine biology was the Greeks and the Romans. Um, so, they were the first people who kind of started studying the oceans. And at that time, um, scientists were not kind of like how they are today. Um, back in that time, we, they were more what we call naturalists. So a naturalist is basically a person who makes observations, will maybe like draw a picture and write those observations down, but that's it. Okay, it stops there. Um, nowadays, you know, scientists, if you think of a scientist as like the white coat in the lab, like doing experiments, right? Um, and so one of the things that's different now is uh, we do experiments. So naturalists did not. So the very first marine biologist is actually considered to be Aristotle. Not only was he a great philosopher, he was also the first marine biologist. And he's considered to be the first marine biologist because he was the first person who tried to like start classifying marine organisms. Right? So if I were to ask you on your quiz, who was the first marine biologist, you would say Aristotle. Okay? 
Uh, Pliny the Elder is also one of the earlier uh, marine biologists. He was Roman, okay? Um, and he looked at shellfish and fish and made drawings and observations. <coughs> okay. Um, fun fact, you don't have to know this, but he was killed during the eruption of Vesuvius. Um, and then you've got a couple pictures there for you. Okay. So after the Greek and the Roman period, we had kind of a big gap um, where there wasn't really much discovered <coughs> about marine biology. Um, and this is the time of the Middle Ages. And the reason for that is because the Middle Ages was much more focused on religion and philosophy rather than on marine biology. So um, marine biology kind of took a back seat until the late 17 and early 1800s where we had better equipment so we were able to start setting the oceans much more easily. Okay. So in the 17 and 1800s um, we did start revisiting the oceans uh, to start setting that again. Um, but we were still naturalist based at this point. So it was still like writing stuff down and drawing pictures. Um, and really the focus um, or the shift in marine biology came from Darwin. Okay, so the shift from like this naturalist based um, point of view to actually like experimental science came with Darwin and his voyage on the Beagle. So this is the famous or infamous voyage, whichever you believe. Um, and Darwin made some claims about some stuff, and people wanted to see who was right or not, and so started doing experiments to um, kind of test those theories. So it caused a shift from naturalism to our uh, scientific method, experimentation. The beginning of what we actually consider to be modern marine biology um, came with this voyage of a ship called the HMS Challenger. Okay? And the HMS Challenger was a ship that went out and sailed around the oceans for four years and made all sorts of observations and conducted experiments and made some crazy discoveries about the ocean. Okay, what was cool and significant, significant about the HMS Challenger is that this was the first time that the main purpose of that voyage was to study the oceans. So before this, you would have you know, a ship going from England to the Americas, and they'd be carrying all sorts of trading goods, and you may have a naturalist on board making observations, but the point of the voyage was to trade. This was the first time there was no trading responsibilities. It was all about studying the sea. Just fantastic. Okay? So they did lots and lots of stuff. They described almost 5,000 new species. Okay, so they went out and found almost 5,000 new species, never seen before. Pretty cool. Um, they also discovered marine microsco microscopic organisms. So this was recently after the development of the light microscope. So they took some water, put it under the microscope, looked at it, and lo and behold, there's a whole world of little teeny tiny things that they had no idea that existed before that. So little teeny tiny microscopic things. They produced, ended up producing about 50 volumes of like encyclopedia-like material. So that's a lot of information that they collected. And it's not like, oh, you know, we've made discoveries and we've passed that and it's all irrelevant now. We actually still use a lot of their information, which is kind of cool. Here's a picture of their voyage, right? So um, they started here in England. We kind of went around the North Atlantic and then down to South America and around, down to Antarctica, Australia, Indonesia, Hawaii, Haiti, okay, South America again, back up. So four years for them to do this. So kind of cool. And then here's some pictures of the ship. Um, and then here's some drawings like that they made. So of some of the animals that they discovered, these are hydroids, kind of like jellyfish a little bit. Um, jellies, 
and then protease here. Um, they also took samples of the seafloor sediment. This is the first time they've done that. And I pulled them up and looked at the seafloor sediment. Here's a picture of like the volumes that they wrote. Okay, the encyclopedia-like volumes. And this picture right here on the right is fairly significant because um, this is actually a drawing that they made. And um, this shows one of the, their major discoveries, which was the discovery of the mid-ocean ridge. Okay, the mid-ocean ridge is a series of underwater volcanoes that runs around the entire Earth and is actually the largest geological feature on Earth. Okay. Um, underwater volcanoes, and they were the first ones to discover it. So, lots of things that the Challenger did. So, on your quiz, if you were asked what's the beginning of modern marine biology, you would say HMS Challenger. Okay. Um, nowadays, we have what are called marine laboratories. So, they're kind of like epicenters for the study of the oceans. Okay. The first one uh, was called the Anderson Summer School of Natural History, and nowadays it's called the Marine Biological Laboratory at West Pole. So, uh, it's in Massachusetts, still one of the major centers for marine biology. We do have others, so Woods Hole is one of the main ones, but how many of you have heard of Scripps Institution of Oceanography? No? Okay. It's in San Diego. Um, it's, again, one of the major centers for marine biology. Um, you have Harbor Branch Oceanographic Institution, that's in Florida. Okay. Friday Harbor Laboratories is in Washington. And then the Institute of Marine and Coastal Studies is in New Jersey. It's actually associated with Rutgers University. So for your quiz, I would probably be able to recognize those and know which ones are East Coast, which, which ones are West Coast. Okay. You got a couple pictures there, Friday Harbor, and then Woods Hole is the one that you can move on. All right. Okay. We have a bunch of modern tools that we can use to study the ocean, like computers. Computers were kind of huge a lot of ways um, when they came online. Um, so before computers, we um, if you had any sort of data, you'd have to like keep it in the ledger, line by line, like and record all of it like that. And if you wanted to do any sort of analysis on that data, it was all done by hand. So all of that math, you have to do it by hand. Computers were awesome because you can store large amounts of data easily and do analysis very quickly on that data. So they're huge. Satellites. Satellites are also cool um, because you can send a satellite up, put it into orbit around the Earth, and you can take a picture of the whole ocean at the same time, um, which is cool. When we can get stuff like, you know, sea surface temperatures, we can track animals with satellites. Um, we can actually, if you look at the surface of the ocean, you can actually tell where there are phytoplankton blooming because the phytoplankton changed the color of the water. Um, so we can see that from space. There's all sorts of different things that we can use satellites for. So it's pretty cool. Um, if you watch Shark Week, okay, and you'll see like some of the tags that they put on them, those are satellite tags, some of them. Um, and so those, are, those animals are being tracked from space, which is pretty cool. Scuba, it's on your notes, but what does scuba stand for? Self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. How many of you are certified in hearing? No? Okay. Well, so, scuba, where you like wear the thing on your back and you put the, the mouth regulator in and then you go underwater and you can like hang out underwater for a long period of time. Okay. Um, scuba's kind of cool. It also helped us to be able to stay underwater for longer, make more observations, um, and further the study of marine biology. Submarines and ROVs. Um, submarines, also known as submersibles, so don't get confused between those two work terms. Um, they carry people underwater. And they can go deeper or longer. And so we even have submersibles that can go all the way to the bottom of the Mariana Trench, which is the deepest part of the ocean. So 
we can get all the way to the bottom. It's hard to do that, but we can. ROVs, remotely operated vehicles. So those are basically like robots that are attached to a, the ship. And there's a person on the ship that controls it like a video game. Okay? We've used ROVs like Hercules to go to um, the Titanic and explore the Titanic, stuff like that. So we use them to like go down to the deep sea, all sorts of fun stuff. Pictures. So if you didn't know what a computer looked like before now, now you do. Okay. Satellites, scuba. Okay. Um, we've got some pictures from satellites where you can like zoom in and actually see the different um, change in the color of the water. This is Alvin all the way here on the right. Um, that's a famous submersible that gets used a lot. So, marine biologists then and now. What is the difference? Well, they've got some things in common. So, scientists are naturally curious. We like to learn about stuff around us. Um, we see things and we're like, I wonder why that happens. Well, that's the same between naturalists and modern marine biology. The main difference between then and now is that we have the scientific method. Okay? Um, and the scientific method we use to test our observations and our ideas. Um, previously, we didn't have it, right? So now we actually can actually test our observations or the hypotheses that we come up with. Make sense? Yeah? Okay. 